So next up, we have Sylvain Forte, who's the CEO at Sazam, uh, a vendor that's really had tremendous success with investment management firms. And ESG is a tremendous focus of the work that Sylvain and the team at Sazam uh, are doing. So uh, Sylvain's going to talk about how you can apply natural language processing to really unearth some interesting signals around the ESG and particularly the sustainable development goals. So Sylvain, great to have you with us again. Yeah, and thank you very much for the invitation and, and very happy to, to give this presentation. Um, I'll be sharing my screen. Let me know if that works well. Perfect. Great. So yeah, the, the topic of this presentation indeed is, is natural language processing for ESG and SDG scoring. So the objective is to show you some techniques in order to fill ESG data gaps, um, especially in Asian markets where information may not be as available as in the Western world for, for now and where there may still be a need uh, to manage risk and to get uh, relevant information related to controversies uh, in, the, in the market. Um, so I'll, I'll just tell you a few words about, about Sesam as a company before we start. Uh, Sesam is a 70 people company that's starting in 2014 and that specializes in that technology called natural language processing. So we basically collect billions of articles uh, from the entire web and uh, read them automatically using NLP algorithms in order to understand what is being said. So a typical thing that we would, we would collect is an article in Japanese or in Mandarin that we would read automatically using our multilingual algorithm in order to, to understand that there is suddenly a fraud issue or an environmental issue uh, happening related to a company of interest in your portfolio. So that is typically how we collect and extract these ESG controls. Uh, Sesame is, is present in multiple uh, countries, including an office in Tokyo, and we are very, very active, uh, especially in Japan and South Korea, uh, as we work with large asset managers and uh, insurance companies there, uh, the likes of Post Insurance or Tokyo Marine, M1 or Kyobo AXA, for example. So we, we have a deep presence in the Asian, Asian market already, and that's mostly due to our multilingual algorithm and our ability to solve local problems, as I'll show you uh, right after. So uh, a few words on the technology and what we do and how we can actually extract relevant ESG analytics uh, by leveraging public web content. So we, we extract information from the web, from financial and non-financial news, blog, forums, social media information. And anytime uh, we pick up on information that corresponds to a company and to a potential controversy, we qualify these articles using algorithms. We have one of the largest data lake in the world, including 4 million sources, including very local news journal, for example, in mainland China, which we have access to, or even the social trading. Um, we then have algorithm in order to read the text automatically and to understand what is being said. So for example, if we understand that the text contains a relevant environmental topic, we can also assess the sentiment around that article and say that this article in Mandarin is very negative and therefore could have an impact on, on, the, company, on the company's risk in the future. So we really have the necessary data in order to address needs in the Asian markets and the algorithm in order to read that content and to transform it into, into scores and into uh, insight. And we deliver that data in various forms. Obviously today I'll show you mostly dashboard so that you can have a look at, at what the data looks like. But we also work a lot with quantitative teams that are leveraging this data by just downloading it uh, through APIs and in integrating it in their model. All right, so let, let's dive in. The, the very first thing that we do at Sesame is we're able to identify local controversies. So this is an example of a recent one related to Nava Corporation in South Korea, where we pick up every single article, both in Korean and English language and in other languages, and where we identify those from local journals, such as COWire.com, uh, which correspond to pot potential risk factors. So in that case, the article that is identified relates to um, uh, regulated cracking down uh, in South Korea, also on, on big tech companies, as it is the case for China too. And this article typically is information that you could read manually, but that may be lost in the flow of information that you're going to have to follow in order to manage all of your portfolio company. And so that is something that we can do automatically, and which we, we can also transfer, transform into a quantitative score, uh, meaning that it can have a systematic impact on strategies and does not need to be evaluated manually. So this is really the source of information, web contents, articles, messages, transformed into controversies that are picked up automatically. And from these, we uh, derive various kinds of analytics, which we present in dashboard. So you see here an example where 
we see content related to a company, we are able to visualize every single piece of content. And we see environmental, social, and governance scores. And these course scorecards are generated automatically using AI without human intervention and are then leveraged in order to build systematic models, for example, for hedge fund strategy, long short equity strategy, or asset allocation use cases, or other use cases where that ESG data is, is relevant. And it's something that is interesting in that data compared also to traditional sources is first, the coverage is quasi unlimited. So we track both public and private companies. We also track other asset classes, everything in Asian markets, not just in Europe and the US. Uh, it's very high frequency compared to ESG data. So it won't be just updated once per month or once per year. It will be updated every single day. And the data, as you can see, is highly transparent. It's derived from AI, but at the same time, every single article and message can be read straight from the platform. And to give you an example here on, on uh, Chinese data, here is one of the controversy that everyone's following right now with regards to uh, Tencent and fighting game addictions and some of the uh, regulators' impact on antitrust rules uh, in, in China. And as you can see, articles are being caught by the system and transformed then into very high granularity scores. As you see on the right, it's, it's beyond just looking at governance or social scores. We really have uh, close to 100 different categories we could track and which can be very deep, such as things related to anti-competitive practice as a specific theme, corruption, tax avoidance, and many highly specific use cases related to data privacy or, or other things. So it's possible in multiple languages to classify these articles into the right risk categories and to transform these into confidence. But it's, it's not all about risk. And depending on the market, in some cases, it's also about thematic investment or assessing opportunities. We do a lot of work in private markets too. And a question that we get is, is that specific company actually aligned with sustainable development goal and positively contributing to, uh, their, uh, to the impact uh, of, of these goals? So we basically track the 17 uh, sustainable development goals developed by the UN and the 169 underlying goals, subcategories, uh, using the same type of algorithm in order to detect not just negative news, but also positive impact on the world. And again, we transform the information in multiple languages and also for local Asian companies, in that case, Toyota Motor in, in Japan, in order to assess how these companies are aligned with sustainable development goals and how they are perceived uh, with regards to their positive impact on the world. So see, you see here that Toyota Motor, obviously we have a lot of content related to the company, more than 200,000 pieces of contents over the past two years. And we see that, that Toyota Motor Corporation specifically contributes to goals related to innovation and infrastructure, but also reducing inequalities at work, sustainable city, and uh, other goals such as climate action. They could do more in that regard, as you can see here, but they do have a positive contribution, which is known to the community and which is something that is shared in online, in the online. Um, a, a last example that I want to show is I've shown you dashboard and how this data can be used in a discretionary manner in order to um, help investment decisions. But a lot of our clients are also using this data for systematic trading. So they are just consuming daily time series. They are using that as a way to get higher frequency scores and to make sure that they are informed of controversies and they are integrating this into model. This is a European strategy in that case, a long short uh, market neutral strategy on the Euro stocks and which leverages uh, ESG data and sentiment data heavily in order to uh, rebalance the portfolio. And as you can see, ESG data is not just a matter of regulatory compliance. It's also a way to generate additional alpha as long as the data is high frequency enough to take into account events-driven matter. Right, so just a summary of, of some of the key topics with regards to ESG alternative data. So this is really data that is um, very deep, that is complementary to traditional scores, that is live, very high frequency compared to traditional ESG scores, and that has the advantage of covering almost any asset in any region of the world, which is actually one of the big reasons for Sesame development in Asia is the ability to cover uh, these types of scores across multiple languages and on the entire uh, web, uh, including Chinese, Japanese, and Korean web. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Sylvan. And uh, if uh, anyone would uh, like to hear a little more from Sazam or even just uh, contribute to uh, 
kind of knowledge of the community, we have a poll up here today. Um, so then just one question from the audience, uh, which you could talk about for an hour, but perhaps if you could give us the 30 second answer, which is how you deal with the nuances of translation and the fact that what say Google Translate makes of a piece of Korean would be very different to what a native speaker would uh, would understand. So I don't know what you want to sort of say at a super high level about how you deal with uh, nuance is the question. Sure, um, the, the, there's no easy answer. We actually train, <laughs> I, uh, we, we actually train algorithms for each language locally. Uh, we do use a bit of transfer learning in order to, to have access to some global structure, but mostly we rely on local annotators and we then train supervised learning algorithm in each individual language so as to take into account uh, local specificities. So yeah, it's, it's for now still the only way. And we don't, we don't like to like translate data on demand. We prefer to have a model that is trained for the specific purpose of analyzing a, a, a language. So, yeah. well, look, you, you had a fantastic go at trying to answer a very yeah. difficult question in a very short period of time. Thank you. I'd encourage you. whoever asked the question to reach out to, to Sylvain to, exactly. to get the uh, more extensive question. But I'm for sharing now, the address on, on, our, on the chat. Thank you. For now, Sylvain. Thank you so much.